G'day there, it's Sam King from King Agricultural. Now today we're going to have a look at this two blade plough and not just from a salesy kind of perspective, we're going to have a proper look at it and we're going to look at it ploughing a crop over here so you can see how it's set up and you can see it in operation and how to adjust it, things like that. Here we don't just sell things but we use things as well. Uh, we've got our own farm here, um, we've got a bit of livestock, we're setting up for orchards and we've got various other agricultural things that are going on too, some of them are quite secret actually. Uh, no, we're not growing any of that. But it, you know, it's really good on a farm if you're buying things carefully and you're buying things that can suit multiple purposes. You know, a lot of ploughs, you get them and they're quite intricate and delicate and so they can pretty much only be used for, for crops, sometimes only really, you know, with really, really light um, soil. So we're going to have a look at how it's set up and how it performs. But just before that, here's a couple of alternative purposes. Think about a plough um, as not just something for crops, but something where it loosens up the soil to do a job with. And on a farm, there are plenty of situations where that's called for. And just right over here, in fact, um, so just in front of the barn, I want to set this up as a loading bay. So, you know, heavy trucks or anything can come onto it with a decent amount of metal so it's not going to sink in the ground. So obviously, first of all, I've got to um, take off all this topsoil. Now, if I want to do that cheaply, um, I'll put a grader blade on the back of the tractor. I'm not going to have much luck with that, am I? It's, it's, it's hardly going to take off anything at all. I'll be there all day and get nowhere. So, you know, usually you would have to pay a decent amount of money to get an excavator in. So you get an excavator or a bobcat or a bully, and that's going to cost money. Why? Because right over there I've got a two-blade plough. All I need to do is hook it up, and I just go through and plough it up. Easy. Take half an hour or something like that, and I'm going to go down that sort of distance. I just take that off, um, put on the grader blade, and it's just going to slice it off like ice cream. Job done. Might have to go um, a second time in some parts, and then you know go through and grade it, put the metal on, compact it in layers. No worries at all. That's just one case. Another one over here, actually, not too far away. It's just a small bit over there. So I just run the plough through there and setting up some bamboos, and way over the back there. Yeah, so I've probably got in total about half a kilometre of um, uh, shelterbouts that we've started so far. And that only took like about two and a half, maybe three hours, you know, to do the whole lot, just running around the whole lot, really easy. And that's way better than using a post, post hole borer or a chain digger that, and you know, many types of soil, it sort of compresses the outside. And um, if, you, if you're uh, putting shelterbouts, that's something like um, bamboo, or pencil willows or some of those kinds of things that you want to spread it's not good to just localize and, and make a nice you know soft hole um, here and there it's it's a much better idea to plow the whole lot because that it gives it something to spread into and you'll be amazed at how fast you know those things track and spread across that line that you've plowed I suppose you're staring at more melons so look at how fast these shelterbouts have grown up by having a trench and it takes no effort at all to chuck a few melon seeds into the ground. we got dozens of the things just oozing out of the ground. And this is our two blade plough. Actually you can take uh, one of these blades off and you can run it with one blade only. In situations where maybe you've got a light tractor or the dirt's really really heavy, you find uh, going a bit heavy you can drop and plough with one. But most situations um, you should be able to handle two no worries at all. So being heavy duty, it's set up for category two, but it comes with these bushes as well, so you can uh, easily slip your um, uh, category one tractor into it. Yeah, now, the, one of the biggest reasons I got this thing here um, for my own use is because everything's really, really solid. That's like a good half inch there at least. Um, uh, the blade here, that's seven point something millimeters. Um, the leg that it's attached to is cast steel, really thick. There's a tendency sometimes for people to think, well, I've got a light tractor, um, I'll get a light plough so I can handle it well. What I find is that if it's heavy duty, then it gives you a bit more stability in the ground, not flopping around the place, especially if it's got those little adjusters, especially if they come off at different angles, and you think you know, about the physics of if some force hits something, what's, what's going to happen, how, thing, how are things going to bend around? So in this thing here, uh, I really don't think you'd have any problems with things bending around at the speed that you're uh, normally ploughing with. Um, better not yak all day because you want to see this thing in operation. But just first I'll point out that the design of this blade, so if you look at this line here, that's exactly in the direction that you're going, so it's very efficient. It's 
not on an angle so it's going to want to push you anywhere so it, it sits nice and straight and it doesn't skew off um, and so you'll find that that cuts nicely through the dirt and then it just the soil just turns over there like that so you get the whole clod um, turning over now I know the idea of using a plow can be quite daunting to some because you may have seen videos of you know old jokers adjusting plows so they're exactly right and if you don't get it just right you know you're never going to be able to grow anything but this particular one is really really simple and I'll show you how simple it is not only is it easier to adjust but you can see when it's going right because look at this this bar is a good reference point and that one is too when this bar is not level but parallel with the ground that you're on whether it's like this or that parallel with the ground and when that's parallel with the ground then you're at the optimum um, position for cutting really well main point being that you want this plow and, and and that blade there to be to be facing in the right direction and 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 both at the same sort of depth if it's not uh, you're still going to be able to grow your tomatoes uh, but you know you, you want to plow it as good as you can and it's really really easy to adjust so all you have to do is like this is category um, two because it's solid as so you can put it on a you know medium sized tractor but you can easily use these bushes here um, to hook it up to a category one tractor like my little old um, Fergie 135 no worries at all so you hook it up when you're hooking that up to the tractor and some of you say yeah yeah I know that is you just wind up the top arm so that the back tilts up there a little bit that means you start up the tractor and you take off and drop this down when it's going down to the right plow depth it should be sitting nice and flat that simple um, so you just start plowing now the best thing to do is you go for three four or five meters and then stop and then just check it is this fairly level or, or parallel with the ground that way and is that parallel with the ground that way stand back and have a look and when you're down when you're down to the um, level that you want to plow to you adjust this so the wheel is touching the ground that's all there is to it uh, the BBC would like to interrupt this transmission just to remind viewers that obviously when you're plowing there are other implements that you need to put together a crop and we'll do a quick review on each of those at the very end of this video um, but there are separate videos on each and you can find them on our video channel or click on the part down there that says information and you'll find okay so now let's just look at a little bit about the planning of you know how you go with your plowing whether it's up and down or this way or that way or whatever if you're on the flat it's quite easy of course uh, but with a slope there like that you've got to think about you know do I run the lines up and down or along like this um, it, it, it depends on a few things you know what's possible and what's best uh, probably in most cases you want to run your lines that way if possible because you know if it rains heavily in that area then right through the, the bottom of the troughs you know you can get all the water picking up through here racing down through the bottom and you think you're going to lose it way down there um, and fair enough that that can potentially happen um, and I got around that by as soon as there was the first bit of you know a little bit of rain I just went down the um, troughs like that, done a bit of salsa dancing, and um, and then after that I never had any problems because that was nice and sort of tightly packed there. So you can do that. Um, but the other thing is like, okay, um, now if you've got a four-wheel drive tractor that's quite steady in the ground, it'll be a lot easier for you to run this way um, than it was for me because what I found is with a two-wheel drive tractor running along this way, what what can happen is that you can lose traction because you've got the weight on, on, on one side so on one side you, your wheel starts to spin now everyone knows that if your tractor's going along the side of a hill like this um, or if it's too steep it's too dangerous but you know if you're losing traction on one side you know you just use the brakes on one side and then that corrects it but you can't really do that when you're plowing because that sort of you know throws things around um, so all you can really do is as you're going if you're losing a bit of traction here and there you just lift, lift the plow up um, but I didn't want to do that because you know I just wanted to get a decent depth down in one go and uh, you know I, I, th I think it's always best if possible to, to plow all in one go because if you're plowing down just a little bit and then coming back again you've got the added problem of um, 
you know, your, your, your tyres and dropping down into the soil and sometimes they go down further or not than others and you can, you know, so it's, it's best to make it less complicated. So what I did is I decided, well, I've got to go either up or down. I had it go, going up because it's best to go up um, because, you know, over time, you know, usually the, the best soil starts to get carried down the bottom and you don't want to always be carrying um, your soil down that way. So I thought, well, I'll go up. And it was quite good, not too bad, but in some parts here and there where the dirt was a little bit tougher, um, I was spinning just a little bit. So what you do is just lift your, you know, lift the thing up a bit and ease it off and, you know, you're okay. You just lift the plough up a little bit and you stop spinning. Um, so I thought, well, I might as well have a go at going downways and then I found that a lot easier. Um, but what you've got to do though is uh, slow it right down um, so you go nice and steadily and as you if, if you go nice and slow then what you find is that each bit of dirt is being carried just a little bit down the hill not much at all uh, if you go too fast like you know two or three miles an hour sort of thing you know each bit of dirt gets carried down quite a bit and each year you know that's that sort of compounds a problem a, a little wee plough like this can save you huge amounts of money in setting up your farm that's why i bought it and that's why I'm recommending it and I know that it's not just going to do the small jobs that I need now because you see the other day I accidentally ripped into a, um, a pine uh, root well I sort of knew it might happen because we're underneath pines um, but it's so solid and going at the speed that, a, that you go with a plough like only you know one or two kilometres an hour sort of thing um, you know so you just know that if you're going to hit a batten or a root or something else like that it's sort of not going to do a huge amount of damage to your plough. It just ripped that root right out of the ground, you know, both ends, and it just kept on going. No worries at all. So that's ploughing out of the way. Um, but before you grow, you're probably going to need something like this. Here's our heavy-duty rotavator, so it can munch through those clods and turn it into nice, light, fine and fluffy soil um, ready to plant in. You can adjust the fineness. And then to put things into rows for good crop management, um, here's our ridging plough. Heavy duty and it's easy to adjust the distance in between rows, how many rows you go per pass, you know, whether you want the hump to be nice and rounded like the strawberry kind, a little bit flat on the top, uh, a, bit, a bit wider or having a bit of a dip in the top so it can collect rain or hold the dripper tape. 